Okay, if you remember, we kind of got started talking about oceans and atmospheres, and um, kind of a cool picture of the Pacific and the International Space Station. A lot of weather going on. So we talked about the idea that Earth heats unevenly, uh, partly because of the curvature of Earth. So we see this natural tendency for heat to want to move toward the poles from the hot equator and cold from the poles move down toward the equator. So we have this north-south flow that gets set up. But then that gets skewed by the Coriolis effect, the, the Earth spinning on its axis. And we see this effect where it tends to make things want to travel in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere in a counterclockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. And the only reason it's different is because you're at the equator, you turn around the 180 degrees, so it's just a viewpoint kind of thing. So it's going to change ocean currents, and it's going to change wind patterns. Coriolis effect is going to affect both of them. And we looked at these patterns, and we found that we had five gyres these circular patterns here. I can't seem to get my pointer to be very bright, but these patterns here in the North Atlantic, South Atlantic, North Pacific, South Pacific, and Indian Ocean, where we have these circular patterns, these circular currents in the ocean. And then around the Antarctic area, it just keeps going all the way around planet around Antarctica. So that's not a gyre. That is what we call the circumpolar uh, current. Uh, and it just keeps going and going. So it just kind of keeps building on itself. It reinforces itself. So that one gets kind of wicked down through there. And you've probably all heard of the Roaring Forties. Well, that's that part of the southern oceans because it's from about the 40th parallel southward from there. So it, it gets to be pretty rough seas. Uh, of course, over in the Indian Ocean, it's kind of the combination, well, let's see, right over in here, right in there, it's kind of the combination of the west wind drift and the gyre, and that area is just one of the most wicked areas out there in the ocean. And of course, that's exactly where they think the Malaysia airplane flew into. So no surprise that they're not finding it. It would have been helpful if they even kind of knew which way it really truly headed. But if that's where it is, it's going to be a tough one to, <coughs> tough one to find. <coughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, this is really off topic, but I'm looking at the Great Lakes. And there's also <coughs> other lakes to the north west. Mm -hmm. What are those? Uh, all the lakes up here? Yeah, I mean, in Canada? Like, like everyone talks about the Great Lakes, but those look like just Yeah, those, those are fairly big lakes. Slave Lake, and a bunch cool. of them there. Yeah, there yeah. they are. There, yeah. Did you see all? Uh, they might have found uh, Earhart's plane, since we're talking about the planes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that Amelia Earhart plane, yeah. In fact, a guy by the name of Gillespie is leading the, the charge. A guy by the name of Rick Gillespie. Okay. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that, there, there's been a series on TV. I think this is the third or fourth um, of those episodes. And um, it always ends in, well, we found something, but we don't know what it is. I think that's the way he gets his next expedition funded. Anyway. So we've got these big gyres, so moving a lot of water around. And remember when we were talking about mantle convection, how we were moving mantle material, and it was carrying the heat along with it? Well, same thing's happening in the ocean. We're moving the water and all the heat, all the energy in that water. It's moving right along. So it's a very, very efficient way of redistributing heat around planet Earth. Now that's just moving water in a lateral sense, but water also moves up and down. And it's what we call either upwelling, ah, if it's moving up, or downwelling if it's moving down. Pretty straightforward, right? Oftentimes what we see this do, all we have to do is change the wind direction sometimes to change whether it's moving up or down. Let me kind of show you how this would work. Let's pretend I'm looking at the coast of California here, so it's the western edge of the United States. And I've got wind that's blowing south along the coast of California. Well, as it starts to blow the water 
Coriolis effect kicks in. So the water doesn't just blow straight along with the wind, but it starts to skew off. And because it's in the northern hemisphere, it starts to move off clockwise, doesn't it? So in the top diagram, you can kind of see that happening. We've got the water moving southward, but now it starts to swing out into the Pacific clockwise away from the land. So this kind of means right along the land, there's a little bit of a trough in the surface of the water. And obviously that's not going to work. Water's going to try and find a level. And in order to put more water to fill that trough in, we're going to see water rise up from down below to level out the surface of the ocean. So what I've done is I've set up a situation for upwelling. Now, if I change the wind direction in the bottom diagram here, so instead of blowing from north to south, it goes south to north, just the opposite.